It's gone. That's all there is to it. And not a cent left. We had $38.70 a few hours ago, and now nothing. It took hours to scrape and repaint Mr. Fowler's boat. Well, that's nothing compared to the forest that Ted and I had to chop down for old Mrs. Carter. And the hours babysitting and, and painting Uncle Raoul's porch. And poor old Casey with that collection box in his back. We pledge $50 to be delivered the day after tomorrow to the Red Cross. Now what are we going to do? Well, first we tell Sergeant Stewart, and tomorrow morning we'll go and see George about it. He should be getting back from his trip sometime tonight. Be mean enough to steal Red Cross money from kids. Eat up, mate. That's 12 bucks worth of grub. That's great, Dutch. How much of the dough you got left? A little over $26. What are you going to do when it's all gone? I got it all figured out. Up to now, we've been just practicing with the small stuff. I got a plan for a really big job ahead. What's that? You'll know in good time. Tomorrow morning, we drive into Indian River. Hmm. There he is. Our sitting, or should I say standing, duck. The foreman from the mine picking up the payroll. Do we go down now and lift it off him? Are you crazy? Main Street in broad daylight? You mean all the money is in that little bag? That is correct. How do we get our hands on it, Touch? We just sit and wait, and the money falls into our laps. I got a spot all picked out. Come on. Haven't seen him around here before. You wouldn't forget a big guy like that. I wonder where he was yesterday and our money disappeared. Oh, come on. You can't suspect every stranger. I'll suspect everybody until we get our money back. Thought he had a nice face. Let's go, Kim. Hi, kids. George. Yesterday, all our Red Cross money was stolen from the fort. What? That's right. Someone broke into the box and took every cent. That's too bad. Nothing else was touched. Have you told Sergeant Stewart? Yeah, last night. Now, who would have done a thing like that? Well, on our way in, we saw this great big guy walking along the road. He looked kind of suspicious. A stranger. You let the sergeant worry about suspicious strangers. When were you meant to give this money to the Red Cross? Tomorrow. We, we've seven or eight dollars to collect around town for jobs we've done. That leaves us 24 hours to make over 40 bucks. Any ideas, George, for making a fast buck? Well, let me think for a minute. House to house work is too slow. You gotta gather a crowd together. Tomorrow is Saturday. And the town will be full of people doing their weekly shopping. A sale. That's it. Everybody loves a bargain. An auction sale. Oh, George, we knew you'd think of something. Yeah, but what do we sell? Yeah, we've got nothing. Well, you won't have when you canvass the town and start collecting. Yeah, sure. Everybody's got good stuff they just don't use anymore. I've got to check some of the back roads. One of you can come with me, see what we can find at the farms on the way. You go with George, Kathy. Mike, Ted, let's write a list of everybody in town and divide it up. Yeah, these little babies are good enough to go through any tire. Yes, sir. They'll do the job for us. Make that hole a little deeper, Louis. Don't want too much sticking up. This is a skilled job, you know. It's got to be done just so. And you know something else, Louis? What? This is a dead-end road. It only goes as far as the mine. We won't have any traffic to bother us. Uh, a little more dirt there, Louis. And yeah, now tramp it down. Good, perfect. The car can't miss it. Now all we have to do is wait, and the money is ours. You sure got all the angles figured, Touch. You have some good things, Kathy. If the boys are doing as well in town, the sale will be a smash. Oh, well, Mrs. Dixon told me that she's got a whole box of stuff in her brother's barn. He has a farm in the back's under the mine road. That's a pretty bad road, Kathy. Do you think the stuff is worth it? 
Oh, well, the way Mrs. Dixon described it, yes. Okay. I've got one more check to make. Then we'll circle back to the mine road. What's up? Is he coming? Shh, no. Well, someone else is. Who? Keep quiet. I can't see yet. The payroll car will be here any minute, and this has to happen. He could ruin everything. Fix him. Fix him? Me? How? How do I know? But you gotta do something, fast. That's not the mine car. What are all these people doing here? That man, that's the one we saw this morning. Are you okay? Yeah. No, I'm fine. Just, just a bit shaken, I guess. Thanks. What happened, George? We must have had a blowout. Oh, you, you just shut off the road. You better take a look. Well, I hope none of my treasures got damaged. Not much damage. I'll see if I can back it out. You better take it easy. You had quite an angle here. It's no good. We'll have to get it towed out. Oh, you do need a tow truck. I'll take it out for you. You'll take it out for me? How? And the brakes off? Yeah, the brakes off, and it's not in gear either. You hold this? seen it, I wouldn't have believed it. Let's have a look at this tire. Did you see what I saw? He must be the strongest man in the world. And you wanted me to fix him. That thing weighed a ton. It's a complete set of saucepans and a whole pile of kitchenware. You know, we're doing pretty well. Most of the stuff I got was pretty good. We should have thought of the sale earlier. Would have saved us weeks of work. I hope Kathy's doing all right. Well, we were getting the goods, but I'm worried about something else. Well, what's that? The auction sale. It's a tough job trying to get people to part with their money. Don't worry about that now, Chubb. Let's check and see what else we have to do. So you spent last night at Charlie Donovan's, and he dropped you out this morning, right? Oh, that's right, Mr. Kelly. I need a few chores for Mr. Donovan. His winter supply were just delivered, so I bailed them in his storeroom. Imagine having your chores done for you by a circus strongman, Kathy. <laughs> oh, that's an ex-strongman, Mr. Kelly. Remember, I'm on my way to the mine. The Toronto office hired me and told me to come up here right away. It's lucky for us you picked today to arrive. Here comes Mr. Bennett, on his way to the mine. This is what we've been waiting for. Shut up. Need any help? No, thanks, Sam. Your new employee here gave us all the help we needed. Sam, this is Big Jim Hanson. Big Jim, your new boss, Sam Bennett. Glad to meet you, Hanson. Hello. I got word to expect you today. Our regular night watchman is ill, and I want you to take over for a few days. 
You'll start your rounds at eight. Mr. Bennett, does that mean that Big Jim can spend the day in Indian River? Sure, Kathy, if he wants to. Would you, Big Jim? We sure could use your help. We got a whole lot of heavy stuff to move for an auction sale. Oh, I'd be glad to, Kathy. There are a couple of things I'd like to pick up at the store, too. Well, I'll be on my way. Sam, wait a minute. There's something I want you to look at. This Caldrop caused the trouble. The tire just went bang. Got any idea how it got here? I haven't seen one of these in years. Not since the Army was on maneuvers near here when I was a boy. Well, we'd better not leave it lying around to cause any more damage. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, I'm going on back to the mine. That is, if I can get around you here. <laughs> Come on, Kathy, let's get back to town. You too, Big Jim. What went wrong with your plan, Touch? Shut up, Louie. I'm thinking. I got it. We use plan number two. Plan number two? I didn't know we had another plan. I just thought of it. Listen. They got a safe at the mine office, see? And that safe is where they're going to keep the payroll. Understand? Yeah. But it's simple. We take the safe. <laughs> Gee, touch your genius. <laughs> How are we going to do it? I got it all figured out, right down to the last detail. Now listen, come with me. Well, it's... that's it. Even the strongest men get beat. I don't know what we could have done without your help, Big Jim. We could never have carried all this stuff by ourselves. Yeah, I'll never forget the way you picked up that old bathtub right out of Uncle Raul's barn and marched off with it. I got the sign painted while you were away in your last trip. Auctioneer, Big Jim Hanson. That's a crowning touch. It's great. <laughs> well, I've got to get my ride out to the mine. I see you all in the morning, okay? Thanks a million. You're sure. welcome. I worked too hard tonight. You're Thanks welcome. again, Big Jim. You're welcome. You know something? This is going to be the best auction sale Indian River's ever had. Just like I said, now all we got to do is blow her. It's a good job I brought along that extra stuff. You got to be prepared. Here, you take this. If anybody comes in, let them have it. Let them have the gun? Certainly not. Louie, you got a lot to learn if you're really going to make it in this business. All the big crooks use guns. They use it to scare people. Scare them, huh? Sure, I can do that. Sure you can. Now look, you keep your eyes peeled in case anybody comes along while I'm working. Okay. Got a match, Louis? Eh? Nope. What? No matches? Give me that gun and look again. That was a close one. Well, now that he's come by now, he won't bother us again. Did you get those matches? What, three matches? 
Oh, Louie, I wonder if you're ever going to make it in this business. As a real professional crook, I mean. All my training. All my planning. And all you've got is three matches. And don't point that thing at me. I told you dynamite. And stop pointing that thing at me. I'm sorry, boss. Shut up. I gotta think. I got it. We'll take it with us. Take it with us? Right. Now you go out and get the station wagon, back it up to this window, and all we do is push the safe through. Now give me the gun and get going. Uh -huh. with you in a hurry. It's getting light. Sure, Dutch. around the safe and heave. Good strong knot, Louie. Got a lot of weight there and a lot of money. Now it's not far to the window. Give me part of that chain and we'll pull again. You keep out of this, big guy. Louie, keep pulling. I got it. You, strong man, pick up that safe. Are you crazy? No, I'm not crazy. I saw you push that truck out of the ditch this morning. You can do it all right. Now, come on, get moving and no tricks. And remember what I got in my hand here. Louie, out the window and bring the wagon around to the door. Okay. We're gonna do this in style. Pick her up. Head for the door. All right, strong man, put it in there and get in after it. What do we want him for? To keep him quiet. Do you want him to give the alarm? All right, in you go, strong man. I'll just lock this door just in case. Thank you. 
Was this part of your plan, Touch? Just get the spare out of the back and be quick about it. Okay. Hey, Louie. We might as well dump the big guy. It'll save time. It's the last stop for you, strong man. Now get out. Now, head toward those bushes. We're gonna tie you down real good. Bring the rest of the chain, Louie. Give you time to cool off. That's far enough. Now we'll just fix you to that tree, and by the time they find you, we'll be far away. Louis, you tie him. Just back him up against that tree. Here, take this. Okay. That's got it, Touch. Well, off to the city with our fortune. What about plan number three? Shut up! Let's go, boys. He said he'd be here by now. Maybe George could help. Say, George, Big Jim isn't here yet, and we were wondering if you could call the mine for us. Well, that's what I've come about. It's about Big Jim. Last night, the mine was robbed. Big Jim's gone, completely disappeared. What? I'm afraid he's the suspect. You see, somebody just picked up the safe and walked off with it. Well, what makes you think it was Big Jim? The safe weighs more than 400 pounds. Oh, no. I'm sorry, kids, but you'll just have to make the best of it. Sam. Sorry, kids, I'm late. I had an unexpected delay. Could I use the telephone, Mr. Kelly, please? I'd like to speak to Mr. Benet. He must be wondering. I'll say he's wondering, and so am I. Go on, boy. Squat! Hey, my head, go on. You know, these two hijacked the mine safe on me as well last night. It took a little time to get things under control. In the safe? Oh, it's in the wagon, still unopened. You know something, Big Jim? The real laugh is on these two characters. There are only a few dollars in that safe. The men were paid just as soon as Sam Bennett got back to the mine yesterday. They stole an empty safe. <laughs> well, kids, when do we start to make some money, huh? You've already got $50 reward money for the return of the safe. Well, that's a start. Come on! Come on!